So in this video, we're going to discuss the Knicks clinching their playoff berth and their road to the Eastern Conference Finals, how they can defy the odds, improve old media, and the naysayers wrong, man. So let's talk about it. Welcome to the channel. I am the objective fan straight out of Kings County, New York City's finest. And you know the vibes, man. Yo, listen, man. What a season. Just coming off of that Celtics game, we won our 48th victory. Um, the most wins since that 2013 season. We overcame what we did last year, 47 wins. Last year, we finished with 47 wins in the fifth seed. Now, we're looking to clinch that second seed. Still, still in the hunt for it. Two more games left. The only way we can clinch the second seed at this point is if Milwaukee loses two games. Or one game. No, two games. Yeah, Milwaukee has to lose their last two, which is possible. If they don't lose their last two, the highest we could finish is in, at the third seed, which is not a bad position. That's the current position we're in. No worries. I just want to give like a little rough draft because everything is rough, but I do want to salute the team. Definitely doing their things. I want to salute Jalen Brunson. Round of applause. I want to salute these guys. Really putting in that work. Really playing well. This is fresh off that Celtics game. We are the third seed with 48 wins, literally a game behind Milwaukee. So not out, of, not out of question yet whether or not we could get that second seed, but we will see. Of course, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cavaliers are less of a threat because we actually own the tiebreaker with them. So literally one more win actually clinches the third seed for us. Because unless Orlando can go on the stretch, because oh well, no, actually no, yes, one more win. Because even Orlando, as you can see right below that, Orlando they have forty six wins. So honestly, one more win, we definitely are locked for the third seed. No one else can come because those teams. If you look at Orlando and the Pacers, they're they're stuck at thirty four losses. That means the most wins they could get is forty eight. So even if those two teams were the win now, and we were the win the one game. So that's the magic number for us. I want the second seed. Now, a lot of people on the channel have been giving us some pushback saying, oh, no, we need to avoid Philly. I am not scared of the Philadelphia 76. According to my notes here, right? And of course, you're not a Knicks fan unless you have the whole schedule mapped out, scores written, tracking each and every game. So according to my metrics, we beat Philadelphia three games to one this year. A lot of those games, we didn't even have our full team. In fact, the, one of the big games we played, and I think that was the first game against them, we beat them after we just acquired OG Ananobi. So we didn't even have a chance to gel as a team and none of that. And off the rip, we wound up beating them. So I'm not as scared as the Philadelphia 76ers as some of you other guys are. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But Philadelphia right now is hovering at that seventh spot. They're looking to get up into that sixth spot. Which they can. I mean, if Indiana loses their last two games, Philly wins their last two, they're in there. So a lot of flexibility and wiggle room. And I think the Heat, oh, the Heat actually could get to the six seed too because they still have two more wins and they probably got that tiebreaker with the Heat. So that's why the Heat aren't just ruled out into the play, the playing games. The PB means you're stuck into the playing games, right? You see, so like the Lakers and Warriors, they can't finish no higher than ninth. Um, same thing with the Bulls, but Sacramento, who just lost, actually, as I'm recording this video, they actually could finish only in the play-in as well. But we're going to stick to the East Coast. Now, I'm going to focus on the teams from 7 to Miami would have to win that 8-7 series to get the 7 seed. Right now, I got them as a team that is capable, but I'm not concerned about them. I'm going to just worry about the Philadelphia 76ers, the Pacers, the Magics, the Cavs, and the Bucks. So, we avoid Boston in the second round. Now, I'm not scared of Boston, and I'm not just saying that because we blew them out. If I want the Knicks to go to the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals, right? I'm looking at the Eastern Conference Finals right now. We have to beat anybody. You can't go into the playoffs with this mentality of, oh, I'll, I don't want to play these guys. I want to play these guys, et cetera, et cetera. No, you got to play who's in front of you and beat them. So I'm not ducking any smoke, right? But the Celtics, we... I'll worry about the Celtics later. This is just a rough, we just clinched. I just want to talk briefly about 
with some of the things I see. So hypothetically speaking, let's say we f- we finish as the third seed. We don't catch Milwaukee, which honestly possibly would be the case. So that means that we got a first round matchup more than likely against the Magic or the Pacers. Now the Pacers have a game games against the Cavs. Hold on, let's pull it up. So I'm not even going to talk about Milwaukee right now. So the Cavs, let's look at their last two games. Yeah, they got the Pacers on Friday. That's a big game, right? Because if we could go back to the standards, you see that they're literally right behind them. They're a game behind each other. So if the Pacers were to beat the Cavs, that would mean that they will be tied. Okay? So Cavs, Pacers, they got a big game. So it's kind of fluid, too. Like, we could honestly, the Cavs could drop to the 6th seed, too. The Magic could drop to the 6th seed. All the... All these teams, there's nothing that's written in stone. That's why I'm just giving a rough day. I'm just trying to show you the path to the Eastern Conference Finals. Honestly, I don't believe none of these teams can give us any real smoke. I believe that we can smoke every single one of these teams from the Pacers to the Cavs, right? Now, the Magic, they got a game with the 76ers, which is a big game because the Magic will be tied with the 76ers. I believe that is the next game. Yep, that is the game Friday. So the Magic will definitely be tied with the 76ers if they were to lose that game. I don't know. I think that the Magic have what it takes to get it done, though they did lose two games in a row. They got a young team heading into the playoffs. Let's see. They lost to the Bucks, which that's a bad loss. They got smacked. And then they also lost to the Rockets, a team that's not even in the play-in nor the playoffs. So the Magic is on the decline. I don't really care if they slide to the sixth slot, but because of their, you know, they're a young team, not too much playoff experience. I mean, we could pull up their roster real quick. This is their stats. Of course, they got Paolo and Franz Wagner. Outside of those two guys, nobody else on the Magic are a threat to do anything substantial. Now, Cole Anthony, who is their sixth man, he is a factor off the bench, and Suggs can create some shots for himself, but I'm not really too concerned about those guys, because the one X factor that now is funny how I'm going to do a video on old media, how old media has been kissing out butts. Oh, the Knicks this. Oh, the Knicks that. They got a good team. Oh, Jalen is an MVP candidate. What happened to him being too small? I did a video. Go check that out on the channel, debunking the whole small thing, literally predicting what we have now. I believe Jalen Brunson is really good. I believe he is the star that we're looking for on the verge of superstardom. So they have no one that can deal with Jalen Brunson. He could eat up all their guards. The spacing on the floor is incredible with Hart, OG, Dante. Now, Hart is not a sharp shooting three-point shooter, but he can knock down an open three. And he can actually create once he gets the ball and he's open. He doesn't even have to settle for the open shot because he can literally take it at the mid-range, got a nice little touch on a little floater, or he could take a little mid-range shot, right? He could even create in the high post a little bit, hitting fadeaways. More than likely, they'll have, if they match up with the Magic, you got who starts? I'm going to pull up there. Let's pull up. The lineup's changed. Last time we played them, they had, well, they were actually hurt. So I'm not sure who they start. Let me let me pull up who, who's going to be the starter. So this, this is the last game. Oh, so they start this kid, Caleb, really? Caleb Houston? He's going to get cooked. I remember him too. Yeah, he got cooked last time. They thought that he could guard Jalen Brunson. So they start a pretty small lineup with the three guards, Houston, Suggs, Fultz, with Ben Carroll. So that must mean, hold on, Franz Wagner is out. So yeah, Franz Wagner, it looks like he's not even in the lineup. So if Franz Wagner is not 100%, I'm pretty sure he'll be bad for the playoffs. What we could do, we'll pull up the injury report. So in the injury report, we could see that once we get to the magic, Franz Wagner, he's day-to-day. So he has an ankle. So that angle better be ready. But they replaced Houston for with Wagner. And Wagner, he's going to be the starter. So they do Ben Carroll with Wagner, with Suggs, and Fultz. So they got a small guard lineup. Those guards are going to get cooked. They're going to have trouble defending us too because we have a lot of mobile wings that don't stay in one spot. And you're not going to be able to double team Brunson. And and if they do double team Brunson, oh man. You got Isaiah Hartstein in the dunker spot, and you got Dante, OG. Those guys are a threat to shoot threes. So Magic, first round, 
we're going to kill them. I'm going to pull up the Pacers because the Pacers is actually who the team that we're played at the face. So Pacers, a couple of games. Well, they actually, I think, of a game behind Cleveland. So they got this Cleveland matchup. But well, let's pull up the injury report. So we'll look at the Pacers on the injury front. Matherin, he's out. He, yeah, he's um actually, yeah, he's he's a, he had seizing and then surgery. He had a torn labor. I remember that. So without Ben and think Matherin, I mean, if you pull up the Pacers, right, and you look at what they have to offer, you're going to pull them up. And you look at what they have to offer. They don't have much scoring, even though they were such this high-paced scoring team. Losing Matherin, he was their fourth best scorer. So they got Naismith, Brown is gone, Hill is gone, Toppin and McConnell are their scorers off the bench. Not worried about them. No, McConnell is tough, but not enough. And none of these guys have playoff experience besides Siakam. So they got a young team coming into the playoffs. Maybe TJ McConnell might have some experience, but it's a young group and they're going to get cooked once again. Best player on the floor is Jalen Brunson. So first round, I got us doing our thing moving forward. Okay? Now, second round, you're looking at the Bucs. I'm going to keep it with the Bucs. Okay? Even though the Bucs is slated to face Philly, not really worried about Philly, I'm going to go with the second seed Bucs or third seed Bucs. But more than likely, the second seed Bucs. I'm not concerned with Milwaukee because Giannis definitely is someone... Something we got to keep in mind. Let's let's look at his injury report, right? So they don't even got him. Oh, yeah, they do. So he's out. And his estimated return date is April 20th. That's in the midst of a playoff series, right? He suffered a left solar strain. You know, he plays at such a high level that him not being 100%, just like MB not being 100% going into a series, that definitely takes away from the Bucks' steam. The Bucks' biggest issue, they lost Patrick Beverly. They, of course, they did the hot trade for Holiday. They have no answer for Jalen Brunson. My whole path to the Eastern Conference Finals right now is based on, and this is, like I said, this fluid, a lot of factors. So if you just look at the landscape and the way things are shaping, is either you're playing a hobbled Milwaukee team or a Embiid who hopefully doesn't, you know, these guys are coming off major injury. I mean, Embiid just had surgery. So, honestly, with the way things are looking, the Knicks playing their best basketball to close the season, I honestly feel as though the Knicks have what it takes to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Even look at Lillard. Lillard is day-to-day. So, in the playoffs, it's only going to get harder and tougher. So... If you don't have your full team, even look at Middleton, look at Brooke Lopez. I mean, the injuries for the Bucs is tremendous, right? And just for fun, we'll look at the Sixers. I'll, I'll do another video on this. Hopefully, this video isn't too long. But this is the path to the Eastern Conference Finals for the Knicks. Just wanted to give you guys some food for thoughts. I'm not concerned about whoever we'll face. Whoever we'll face is whoever we'll face. You, you got to play who's in front of you, right? So, MB, he was actually listening to this questionable for Friday's game. Versus the Magic. That's a big game. If he's not ready to go, it's a big game. So that's all for this video, man. Definitely, thanks for checking me out. In the meantime, look out for the podcast this Monday, this week inside the New York Knicks. Any other updates, I'll let you know. But this is a rough video. Not really a deep dive. I just wanted to spend some time going through why the Knicks can make the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't think none of these teams can see us. And the only team that's really a threat is the Bucks. So that's all for this video. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, let's go next.